Good morning and welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Warrensburg. I'm Peter Norton, the pastor, and the name of Jesus Christ who calls us to rejoice that we are children of God. Welcome today in worship. And good morning. I'm Kelly Weinberger, Next Generation Minister, and I'm so happy to see you all here in person and online. Um, praise God for our rain this morning. We Amen. need it Absolutely, desperately. Yeah. We'll start our announcements with tonight. Our youth group is from 6 to 7. This is middle school and up. We will be studying faith, friendship, and grace, which I think it's a wonderful combination. And our topic is real friends comfort each other. And so we're talking about how we can do that through Christ's love. Awesome. That sounds excellent. Wonderful. So if you're a middle schooler in high school, then, uh, you know, come tonight and uh, there'll be food and a great Bible study from 6 to 7 o'clock here at the church. I want to let you guys know about uh, kind of a cool opportunity. So our congregation has been around for about 200 years. And uh, so there's a special exhibit at the Lone Jack Historical Society that's been put on to just to kind of feature how our church has had an important role in our community throughout uh, the generations. And uh, this specific exhibit is going to focus on the Civil War. So uh, our church had people in it that, you know, were a part of the Confederacy, that were part of the, the Union, and how um, there's some really great stories about how, through their faith in Christ, they were able to kind of bridge some of those divides. And anyway, I don't want to spoil it, but there's some pretty amazing stories uh, that we're going to be sharing there. So uh, if you get here at 10 o'clock, we can, you can carpool together uh, with us to the Lone Jack Historical Society. We'll be done around uh, 2 o'clock, so you don't want to miss that opportunity. Opportunity. I want to let you know about some uh, small groups that, that are uh, starting right now. So we're having a whole bunch of uh, small groups that are starting and, and launching. Just want to feature one of those today. There is a, a group that's called The Chosen. And so we're going to be watching a video series that was crowdsourced. It's been viewed by over 400 million people. And uh, it helps you to kind of imagine what it would be like to be one of those first disciples of Jesus Christ, to walk with him, uh, to see him uh, during his ministry. So Jim Downing is going to be hosting uh, two sections of this group. They'll be meeting on Wednesday, starting this Wednesday, uh, one at 4 o'clock and one at 6.30. Uh, the sessions will be about 75 minutes long, and so we'll kind of get to watch the episodes uh, together and then discuss uh, the show, The Chosen. So I hope that you guys can sign up and be a part of that uh, starting this Wednesday. I hope so, too. I went to the meet and greet with that with some some other congregants, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. It's just a fabulous story. I just can't wait to get into it. And I'll be going to the 4 o'clock. Um, but I would love for anyone that's even think you might be a tiny little bit interested, please come check it out. Yeah, come check it out this Wednesday. Absolutely. Well, can I have Jana Miller come forward? And we're going to talk a little bit about our United Women in Faith and this, this important ministry in Mission University that's going to be coming up next summer. So can we uh, watch the preview video for that? Sometimes we all need time and space to recenter and restore, to enrich our spirit and take care of our souls, to energize our relationship with God and collectively discover how we are called to respond to suffering with compassion, to connect with a community where we'll be nurtured and encouraged to grow. Welcome to Mission U, a transformative experience designed to recharge and refocus your faith. Gain confidence in your interpretation of scripture with a justice lens that connects to today's world. Connect across generations and develop the confidence to speak about social issues as a person of faith. It's time to come together and work on meaningful transformation. It's time to recharge with Mission U. That was um, a little video on Mission U. We call it Mission University, and it is sponsored by United Women in Faith. We meet annually at different places over the state, and we have a study that we do, a biblical study, and it's also written for women, youth, and children. A lot of uh, women come and bring their grandchildren with them, and there's some who are now our leaders who grew up coming to it. Um, and we offer, um, it's a, great time for fellowship we study the scriptures we have a small worship service called plenaries uh, and we also have on the downtime we have in extra rooms we have hands-on mission going on so you can choose to do something that we when, when the the school is done that we just we send out to uh to whatever it's going to be and other people decide that so um we also, if you're very, if you're interested at all in going and meeting wonderful women from all over the state, we give scholarships to youth and uh, women. So if you're interested at all, please let us know. Um, and so it's a wonderful time. I've been going for, I'm trying to think how long I've been going. <laughs> I don't know. 
it's always held in the summer, usually the last weekend in July. And um, so it's a great time to get together, study the scriptures, be with women, and learn about Jesus. So um, I also want to tell you about next Sunday will be our candle burning Sunday, and we burn a candle for as many minutes. Uh, it takes this year, based on last year's data, $20.23 per mission that we spend a minute this year. So we take that money, divide it by 20.23, and then that's how many minutes we burn our candle. So last year we got to burn our candle for 42 minutes, so that was exciting. So we, uh, we hope to be able to do that at least this year. And if you want to give, you can give in the offering plates that are offered. You can give online, and um, you can also designate it to be in memory of someone or in honor of someone. And then this Tuesday, we're having our meeting, uh, our first meeting for the fall, this Tuesday at 2 o'clock. And we've invited uh, ladies from Survival because we want to support them, and we're giving them gift bags of uh, some beauty items, some things, you know, lotion, shampoo, mascara and things like that for them and um, we'll have the speaker from survival health tell us about how that's going and what some of their needs are now um, so uh, we want to we we thank you for your continued support it's such a joy to be in this congregation and thank you all very much let's all rise as together we join our responsive call to worship it's found on the screen It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. To tell of thy loving kindness early in the morning. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church family. I'm Pastor Susan, the associate pastor here, and I welcome you to service this morning. It is nice to have some rain today, and it is going to shift us into the fall season this week, as you notice. It is going to be quite a week, and I invite you today to think about all that we have and it also to consider all the people that are dealing with their issues with the seasonal changes. I really like summer, but I do know the beauty of this fall. So I would ask you today to take a breath, let everything off that's been in our lives this week, and let's go to God in prayer. Lord, what an amazing summer we have had. Today we know the first day of autumn is at hand, and we look forward to cooler days and for nature's beauty to unfold. 
For this, we rejoice in your creation. As we march forward through the seasons, guide us to use the days to renew our souls. Give us the confidence to know your presence, even though the days get shorter and the nights get longer. Today, we ask you to care for those in our family, those that struggle with health issues, whether they be physical or mental or spiritual. We ask you for wisdom for those who lead in our community, our country, and our world. As we lift up our prayers and turn them over to you, guide us, give us the peace and the contentment to continue through the seasons of life, rejoicing in all that you provide. Thank you, Lord for hearing our prayers that we have shared with you today. And now, with the words that you have taught us, let us join together in your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand for our next hymn. We already had Morning Has Broken, but this time it's number 77, How Great Thou Art.
morning. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For the, this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. our young crew to come up and join me today. As you notice, Miss Beta is not here right now, so she asked me to step in and help out. So we invite you to come join us. morning we're going to be learning a little bit about Joseph and the many technicolored coat. Have you ever heard that phrase, the technicolored coat? Well, Joseph had a special coat and it was full of colors and they got to be, it was a real important thing at that time. I don't know, I know we wear a lot of color nowadays, don't we? It's kind of fun. Well, anyway, it also came with some headaches. It wasn't the easiest of life to have that bright technicolored coat. And sometimes life gets pretty messy. Did you know that? Yeah, doggone it, why can't it be simple? But when life gets messy, sometimes we get in trouble and we have to find places that help us. Well, we have a group in town called Survival House and they have a huge ministry to help people take care of problems that come up. And just like Joseph with his technicolored coat, he had to go make his own new life, didn't he? Well, you're going to find out more about that. And what we're doing here with you guys is we're going to be making cards. I'm going to give you a card for you to take with you in a minute. And you take it to Children's Church. And what you're going to do is you're going to make this a Technicolor card. Because next week we're going to do the Kids Can Do. And they'll bring, you can pick another one if you want. But they're going to bring, anybody can bring pocket money and change and then dump it in our buckets next week. And do you want another one? And so they're going to make cards and you're going to buy, they're going to have books to take to all these kiddos that are having a hard time with their moms and things. And we're going to say, we love you. And that's what they're going to do. It's our way of giving a little bit of color and life to them and books are so much fun. So Kids Can Do is going to collect money to buy the books, to give with the cards, as you all learn about God a little bit more and learn how to share your love a little differently. Is that okay? Well, that's what you're going to do when you go in there into Children's Church, and you're going to learn those things, and you're going to find some fun and put some color on these cards. So... I think it's important that we learn how to love one another in different ways. And so we're going to say a little prayer right now. And you can repeat after me. And then you can go to Kids Church and learn how to do this for the others. Okay? All right. Dear God. 
Thank you for your love. Help us give that love away so that we can bring some technicolor, some technicolor into others' lives. Amen. Thank you for coming up here today. Miss Emma knows the way to the classroom. You ready to go to class with her? Yeah, yeah I'll go have some fun. I think you're going to have a few extras with you. Amen. Well, now we come to the time in our worship service where we have an opportunity to offer a portion of what God has given us uh, back to God and to God's memory. So I've invited uh, Crystal German to come and tell us a little bit about how we're changing lives here in Warrensburg and in Johnson County through our scouting ministry. So you're going to tell us a little bit about it? All right. Well, good morning. As Peter said, my name is Crystal and I am the committee chair for Cub Scout Pack 399, which meets here every Monday night in our church. Um, Um, so just some of the things that our kids are doing. Well, first off, let me back up, and I want to take a second to thank the United Methodist Men and Peter for continuing to support our scout organization. Without that, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible for us to do what we're doing with these kids. 
One of the things that each rank of Cub Scouts is required to do is an adventure that is called Duty to God. And through that, we ask the kids to really think about their faith and what that means to them and what they can do to show externally to others their faith in Christ. And so I know for my son, um, when we very first did that, we sat down with him, we asked him to talk to us about what it meant to be reverent to Christ and and how he could show that he was faithful. And he said, well, God wants me to be respectful to my parents, so I guess I'm not going to fight with my sister for the next month to do that. So, um, you know, that we'll take it, right? <laughs> um, so as we've continued on, you know, every year he sits down with us and he talks to us about what it means to him to be uh, reverent and faithful to Christ. And um, it's gone a little deeper each year. He's yes. he's. Um, externally showed us more and more what that what that means to him and so this year um, his den or his, yes his den is actually going to work on their religious emblem and Peter and Kelly are going to come in and work with the kids to help them just further explore um, what it means to be a disciple of Christ that's wonderful thank you so much for sharing about <laughs> thank it you. yeah I got to come this Monday and uh, they were I don't know if you guys did scouting, but they, you know, they, they do the Pinewood Derby. That's one. They did another one where it's called the regatta. They made these boats out of just like recycled materials, and they were like blowing them with little, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, make it a race. So that, that was pretty cool. Thank you so much, Crystal, for what you do and for, for your ministry. Uh, she's going to have to head out. To her family's already made it back home. But I wanted to uh, just, you know, tell everybody that, you know, the, these ministries are made possible because of what you're doing, uh, you know, here in this congregation, that we're raising the next generation in faith uh, because of, uh, your gifts and your, uh, your contribution to this congregation. So let, let's pray and give thanks to God. Dear God of grace, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to uh, raise the next generation in faith, uh, to help young men and women to know that they're loved and cared for by you and by your son, Jesus Christ, and to, uh, through you know, mentoring and uh, the, the time and, and the care from members of this congregation and community, that uh, young people would uh, grow up to be good, good citizens and good Christians. So we offer you our, our financial gifts. I ask you to bless them and multiply them uh, so that the kingdom of heaven might spread farther on this world. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. seated. So what's the most fun that you've ever experienced at church? Or maybe to put it a different way, what's the most fun you've ever had at, you know, some kind of a church-related event? Um, you know, for those of you that have been a part of this congregation maybe for, for several years, whenever I ask that question, you might 
think about Wednesday night dinners. Uh, before the, the pandemic hit, one of the things that we uh, had here at our church is we'd have kind of home-cooked meals that we would, you know, host here at our church, and then, you know, people would have a great time socializing together and then go on to do a Bible study or to be a part of choir practice or bell choir practice or something like that. Uh, maybe for you, the, whenever you've had a really great time, you know, you just, just felt excited and having fun at church would have been being involved in a youth mission trip, maybe as a young person or as an adult leader. You know, going and uh, traveling and, you know, offering your time and care to other people that, you know, you maybe have never known before and all you have in common is your shared love for God. Maybe uh, having fun in church looks to you like just coming here on, on Sunday morning and really losing yourself in, in the music and in the worship and uh, just feeling supported by this family of faith and the love that we share together in Jesus Christ. You know, for me, whenever, you know, I was kind of thinking about, you know, when was a time that I just really had a lot of fun in church? Whenever I was growing up in the first United Methodist Church in Wentzville, Missouri, which is, you know, just on the other side of the state, uh, one of the, my special memories was uh, one of the families in our congregation, they would host every year a hayride. And, um, you know, we would, you know, get on the back of a tractor and we'd go all around their field and we'd have a bonfire and we'd have you know, s'mores, and just it was a wonderful time to, to connect together with my friends and, you know, with my mom and my dad and my brother. There's a Yiddish proverb, and I don't really quote, quote a lot of Yiddish proverbs, but I'm going to give you one today. There's a Yiddish proverb uh, that says this, what soup is to the body, laughter is to the soul. Have you guys ever read the uh, book of Psalms before? So, so maybe if you're, if you're new to, uh, you know, Christianity, if you're just kind of growing in your faith and reading the Bible and those kind of things, if you, if you take the Bible and you open it up right to the middle, you know, more than likely you're probably going to land right in the book of Psalms. And the, these are just wonderful prayers. They've been prayed for generation after generation after generation, faithful people. And uh, the, the uh, Psalms represent for us the, these prayers, these songs, in praise of God, of, of giving thanks for God's steadfast love and abundant care in our lives. And um, I, I really love the Psalms. I, I pray the Psalms every uh, morning, every evening. Um, it's just something I've been doing for the last several years. Uh, through, the, through the different Psalms, uh, we were carried through the different emotions uh, that we can feel in our relationship with God. They're, they're attributed to King David. Uh, St. Augustine, who was one of the, um, you know, just kind of uh, the, the church fathers, he really helped to clarify uh, the Christian faith in the beginning of, of Christianity, uh, he said this. He said that God teaches us to praise through the Psalms, not for what God gets out of it, but because we come to know and love God better whenever we pray the Psalms uh, together as a, as a community of faith. So how much do we associate our church uh, and our faith with fun and celebration and joy? Um, you know, John Wesley, he was one of the founders of the United Methodist uh, tradition with several other people, and one of the things that, that he said is, is he, uh, you know, was, I think he was very surprised at, you know, how uh, his ministry just created this, this global movement, you know, where people were just hungry to know faith in Jesus Christ. He said, you know, a Methodist rejoices in God. You, you can know that someone is, is a Methodist in the Christian uh, tradition if, if they just experience a lot of joy, if they're a joyful person uh, to be around. Um, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to read some of the sermons of John Wesley. I, I would really encourage you to do this. Th this would be a great um, thing to do in your lifetime, you know, to, to read some of the classic sermons that John Wesley wrote. He also wrote uh, several spiritual diaries. He wrote several letters, um, you know, j just an incredible writer. Um, one of the things that, that I really experience whenever I've read uh, his writings is the sense of joy, of just rejoicing uh, in the faith that we share together as Christians, you know, um, just, just feeling very happy about the good news that, you know, Jesus Christ loves us, forgives us, and has come into the world, and uh, wants to be a part of our lives. So I think that one of, you know, in, in our message series, we're doing a message series called Remarkable, and we're looking at, you know, what are some of the characteristics of people that call themselves Methodists? Uh, last week we talked about love, and this week we're going to talk about how a Methodist, you know, really rejoices in experiencing God, that there's just a lot of joy in our hearts. I'd like to invite you today to do a few things as we worship. The first is to take out your Bible, and we're going to read through several important passages of Scripture uh, together, and this is a great way for us to get in that habit of, of daily drawing on the Word of God. I'd invite you to take some notes. That's how we learn. And then let's have a prayer and ask for God's blessing to be with us. Let's pray. Dear God of abundant grace and love, we just rejoice at this opportunity to be with you and uh, to hear that uh, you are a part of our lives, that you love us, you care for us, that you came into the world. 
as your son Jesus Christ uh, to offer us forgiveness and grace and salvation. And God, um, you know, right now there are many of us that are, uh, you know, things are going very well. The circumstances of life feel good. For some of us here today, uh, there, there are a lot of challenges. And so, so be with us, deliver us, uh, but help us to draw on your grace that is uh, deeper, the, a joy that comes from abiding in you that's deeper than our circumstances, but comes from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So I'd like to invite everybody uh, to uh, turn to the psalm. So if you got your Bible, go and flip to the middle of it. We're going to look at Psalm 84. Psalm 84 in there. So um, there, as I understand it, in the, in the Jewish tradition, in the Hebrew tradition, uh, there, there's a tradition of, of praying uh, a certain prayer three times a day. And I'm, I'm not really great with my Hebrew. I'm a little stronger in, in Greek. But uh, this is the uh, Ashri prayer. And uh, this comes from Psalm 84, and we're going to read verses uh, 4 and 5 uh, together. But this is prayed several times a day to, to draw ourselves closer to God. So Psalm 84, verses 4 and 5 tell us this. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you and whose heart are the highways to Zion. And I love how the psalm ends in, in verse 12. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. So three times a day, people, you know, our, our Jewish brothers and sisters, they, they pray this prayer is, is a reminder that we should rejoice, that God is a part of our lives, that we should uh, rejoice in the knowledge that we can trust in God and to be delivered and cared for, you know, by him in all circumstances in our lives. During Jesus' ministry, there, there were all these people that were coming to, to learn from him. They wanted to understand who God was. They wanted to hear his message. And, and so uh, one day he uh, took them to a mountain and um, he, he preached to them a sermon uh, to try to help them to understand God's love and God's care and, and, and the promise of God's abiding trust and grace for them. And this is often referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. If you turn to Matthew chapter 5, I'd like for us to read uh, just the first part of the Sermon on the Mount. So this is Ma Matthew chapter 5. We'll read verses 1 through 7. And Jesus uses kind of a similar construction that we just read in Psalm 84. This begin, the chapter 5 begins with, When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and, they began, and he began to speak. And he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And blessed are those who, are, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Aren't, the, aren't those just beautiful words? Doesn't that just inspire you to hear the words of Jesus Christ? <clears throat> the, uh, the prayer that we looked at in, in Hebrew, in, in uh, Psalm 84, uh, the, the word is uh, ashri, uh, you know, happy are. Jesus uses, you know, the, the New Testament is written in Greek. The, the, each of those phrases where it said blessed are, uh, that is the Greek word, which is makaroi, which uh, is translated here as blessed are. Now, this is the same construction that we looked at in Psalm 84. And so, you know, Jesus is, is helping us to see that we're blessed by God. You know, uh, you know we're, if you heard the word Maccabees, that means blessed. You know, we're blessed by God, and whenever we're blessed by God, that includes the sense of joy and happiness, that we should rejoice at the fact that we are blessed by God. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is telling us that those who are blessed and happy are those who wait on the Lord, those who trust in God's deliverance, even whenever circumstances are painful and challenging. So, you know, if we read through the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us, you know, blessed are the poor, you know, those that are, that are financially poor, that are going through hard economic times. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those of you who mourn. Maybe, maybe you're mourning the loss of, of a, someone in your life, someone who's passed away, gone on before you. Maybe you're mourning the loss of an opportunity. You will be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You will be filled. You know, the righteousness one day will come and be a part of this kingdom of heaven on earth as God's a world unfolds and reigns here forever. John Wesley, uh, the founder, one of the, the founders of the United Methodist Movement, he was an incredible scholar, uh, you know, Oxford educated. He had a doctorate in, in theology in the 1700s, and uh, you know, he spoke many languages. He spoke uh, German. He spoke Spanish. He, you know, he was uh, somebody who studied the original languages of the Bible. He studied biblical Greek, you know, the language of the New Testament. He studied Hebrew, the language of 
of the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, and he did his own translations of, of uh, the Bible. And the passage that we read today, you know, in the, in the NRSV, uh, Matthew chapter 5, we have the, the translation, blessed are the poor in spirit. Whenever John Wesley did his translations, he wanted to emphasize uh, the, the, the joy, the happiness that we feel whenever we trust in God. So, so he, uh, whenever he was translating the Sermon on the Mount, he used the words, happy are, happier those are mourn, for they will be comforted. Happier the meek, for they will inherit the earth. The reason that I kind of walked us uh, through th this uh, study of the Old and the New Testament is, is to encourage us to see that there is a deep sense of happiness and joy uh, that comes to us whenever we trust on God, a, a deep sense of joy and celebration that isn't dependent on the circumstances of the lives that we live. You know, happiness, it doesn't mean, you know, putting on a happy face, you know, kind of forcing ourselves uh, to feel good or to, to, you know, experience something that we're not experiencing. Happiness isn't dependent on us getting our own way or being in control. One of the amazing promises of Jesus is that joy comes from resting in God's grace, both in the circumstances of life that are fun and enjoyable and pleasing. God's happiness rests on us during the challenging times of our lifetimes that are painful and difficult. At this last uh, several weeks, I've, I've had the honor to just, just play a small part in walking with families that have lost a loved one, you know, to walk them uh, through this process of, of saying goodbye and, and connecting with each other and, and, and drawing on their faith in Jesus Christ, you know, looking to the Lord as, as they try to make sense of losing someone that they love and care about deeply. And um, the way this process works, that I'll usually get a phone call and uh, we'll, we'll have a, you know, a really important conversation on the phone and then everyone will get together, we'll, we'll meet, you know, here at the church, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, this person's life, and, you know, we'll often, there'll be a lot of laughing and, and sharing and, and memories about how uh, their loved one has, you know, just made such an impact on, on their lives and on the community around them, and, you know, th and during these sacred moments, uh, you know, that there's laughter, there, there's joy, but, you know, even in, in the same sentence sometimes, there might be tears, and there might be sadness, and, and, uh, you know, sense of regret, where you say, man, we, we had plans, you know, we were going to, we were going to take that trip, or we were going to work on that project, and, you know, it just, it just didn't happen. During these sacred conversations, as, you know, together, uh, we support each other uh, to, there's a deep sense of joy in resting in the assurance of God's grace and God's forgiveness, and the promise that one day we'll be reunited together again. I was reading the Upper Room devotional the other day and uh, came across a devotion that was entitled In All Circumstances, In All Circumstances. This was the devotion for April the 28th, 2022. It was written by Henry Childress. And um, he describes uh, spending the night with his 92-year-old father who is uh, you know, having some real difficulty breathing in the hospital. He, he stays up all night with him. And for any of you who have ever uh, been through an experience like that, ever stayed with someone in the hospital or, or you know, uh, stayed at someone's home that's having some real serious health challenges, you could probably imagine what this was like. You know, the, uh, you know, all through the night, doctors and nurses were coming in, they were taking tests, they were drawing blood, they were administering medicine, all those kind of things. And just, just in a very uncomfortable situation. You know, th there was very little rest. Neither of them were able to sleep. Uh, the, the author, uh, Henry Childress, he ends the devotion with these words. He says, as I watched my father labor to breathe in the early morning hours, I realized that I had forgotten my nightly prayers. And so I began to pray for my dad's recovery. I praise God for my dad's 92 years of life and for all of the years that I've had with him. Sometimes we find ourselves overwhelmed with the frenzy of life, but during these moments where we feel like we're not in control, we can draw on Paul's words in his letter to the church the Thessalon in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. I'll, I'll read to you those words. This is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So one of the reasons that in our church we encourage people to memorize passages of Scripture uh, like this one is that, you know, if we have a few scriptures memorized, that they're a part of our hearts and they're a part of our souls, then whenever we have these moments where we feel just overwhelmed and, uh, you know, life almost seems unbearable, that, that maybe, uh, you know, saying that scripture to ourselves, you know, in those moments of frustration, that that will help us to hear God's voice uh, speaking to us 
uh, just a little bit more clearly. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18, that might be a great scripture for all of us uh, to memorize and have ready uh, whenever God wants to speak to us and let us know that we can rest in his grace and his assurance. One of the reasons that um, I think that the, the church, you know, our church is so important is that, you know, here we have an opportunity to develop, you know, really deep, meaningful relationships with people of very different backgrounds, you know, d different racial backgrounds, different national backgrounds, different, you know, professions, economic backgrounds. Uh, I, I think it's so important that my children grow up uh, knowing people of different ages, um, you know, grow, knowing people in different generations. And I think that it's so important that we regularly um, spend time with and, and develop friendships with people of genera different generations because it helps us to really know and realize that, you know, at some day each of us are going to complete this race of faith. That someday each of us is going to return to the earth and our, and our souls are going to return to be with God. Recently I had the honor of uh, officiating Alice Hanrahan's celebration of life service, and her family picked out a poem that I think uh, just beautifully captures uh, this idea of trusting in God's grace in all circumstances. I'd like to read this to you. This poem is entitled, I'm Free. Don't grieve for me now, because I'm free. I'm following the path that God laid for me. I took his hand whenever I heard him call. I turned my back and I left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, or play tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah, yes, these things too I will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish for you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I've savored much. Good friends, good times, my loved one's touch. If my time seemed all too brief, don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and rejoice with me. God wanted me now. He has set me free. Joy is a, is a choice that we make. Joy is the comprehensive response that we make with our whole being to God's love. Joy is a mark of discipleship that gives us confidence and courage. Joy is a sign of spiritual maturity. It's one of the, the fruits of the Spirit that Paul describes in the book of Galatians. You know, right now, one of the things I'm doing to just, uh, you know, grow in my own faith in Christ is I'm um, listening to the Bible on audiobooks. So, like, if I'm, uh, actually, do you guys know Kirk Peterson? He's the, the track coach. He's, he's working with me to get me in shape right now. So, I'm, whenever I'm running, I'm usually listening to the Bible on audiobook or I'm doing the dishes or something like that. And some of you know I uh, kind of dabble trying to learn Spanish. So I'm listening to the Bible in Spanish. I don't understand everything perfectly, but so as I started with Genesis uh, just a few months ago, made it to about Leviticus, and then I skipped to the New Testament. So, uh, and right now I'm listening to the book of Acts, and the, uh, one of the things that really strikes me about the first generation of disciples, you know, Peter and Paul and, and John, is that, you know, they left everything uh, to, to travel to be with strangers, you know, people across Africa and the Mediterranean world, they left everything to share with people the good news of Jesus Christ, their love that they're forgiven, to heal the sick, to feed the hungry, following the example of Jesus Christ. And, and, and I, I love in the, the story of Acts how they go to people that were forgotten by empire, you know, people that were, that were slaves, people that were just, uh, you know, didn't believe they were worth anything. That's what they were told by the Roman Empire. But they go to tell them that they're loved by Jesus Christ, that they have sacred value, that God came and died to be with them. And, um, you know, I, I think it's so hard for any of us to understand what these first generation of Christians went through. Uh, I mean, right now in the United States at this time in history, I think that, you know, Christians are, are very welcome. Uh, you know, I can't tell you the honor I've had at being, you know, invited into people's homes or to be a part of people's lives, to come and share meals with people or just to come and pray, uh, you know, because of our, our shared faith. Or maybe they're not a person of faith, but they just... They just respect, you know, uh, those of us that are, that are Christians. They see that we're, we're trying our best to, to honor God and to honor other people. And, um, you know, but th this first generation of Christians, I'm at the part right now in the book of Acts where Paul is under arrest. He's been beaten up, and he's being uh, carried on the ship to go to a trial in Rome, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and what does Paul say about all this? I mean, I can't even imagine uh, how frustrating that would be. But he, he tells us in 1 Thessalonians, 
to pray constantly, to pray without ceasing, uh, to give thanks to God in all circumstances, to, to rejoice, to rejoice. I think that joy, uh, experiencing deep joy, is a choice that we make. You know, uh, we don't choose to feel happy. You know, we can't choose our emotions from moment to moment. Our, our, our emotions, they just kind of move around on us. But we can choose our attitude, can't we? And we can choose the thoughts that we, we continue to repeat to ourselves. And we can definitely choose the influences that we bring into our lives. And, you know, I'm really excited that all of you today chose that you wanted to come worship together uh, Jesus Christ, and we're supporting each other to do that. We can choose to, to read the scriptures and, and, and to listen to, uh, you know, important books and to, to really grow and, and bring in healthy influences into our lives and into our hearts. And we can certainly choose the words that we speak and the actions that we take. As Christians, we understand that circumstances at some times in our lives are going to be favorable and pleasant and enjoyable. Many times in our lives, our circumstances are going to be difficult, unpleasant, painful. But Jesus encourages us to choose to trust in God through them all. We could say to ourselves, I'm going to draw on God's grace, and I'm going to participate in the disciplines of faith, you know, the, the Methodist disciplines of faith, the Christian disciplines of faith, of, of praying every day, uh, saying, God, I praise you, uh, even whenever times are difficult and I'm going through painful circumstances. But I can be present, I can, I can support the community of faith and worship. I can give to God, I can serve other people, I can serve God, I can witness my faith to others. The basis for our joy is the assurance that when we repent of our sins, we truly are forgiven. Joy is a choice. Today we read from the book of De Nehemiah, and there's this great story of, uh, you know, the people of Israel, they're celebrating in God's presence in their lives, and they're, they're having this big feast, and they're, you know, they're even uh, sharing the food with, with people that aren't already there at the party. They're going out uh, to make sure that everybody has food to enjoy and, and to eat and to celebrate. And, and I just love this, this quotation from Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, that says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. There's, there's real strength in choosing joy that comes from God, not, not just, uh, you know, feeling happy in a, in a moment that's fleeting, but choosing a lifetime of joy with God. I had the honor this, this last week of uh, walking with the family of Charles Gilbert uh, as, as he passed away on, on uh, September the 11th, and, and we, we celebrated his life. And one of the things that really struck me in, in talking with his family, and I actually interviewed several of his students, uh, the, you know, he, he was a teacher at the University High School uh, here in Warrensburg, and he was on the faculty at uh, the University of Central Missouri. But uh, as I interviewed, you know, person after person and, and talked about him, uh, so many people told me that whenever you spent time with Gil, that's, that's what, you know, they called him, was that you felt better afterwards, that you, you felt a lift, that you felt more joy and happiness in your life um, after you spent some time talking with him. Gil had a very difficult childhood. Uh, he grew up in the Depression. He was part of a very large family, and he knew what it was like to not have extra. Two of his brothers passed away whenever he was incredibly young, that he had a brother pass away when he was in eighth grade, and another brother passed away whenever he was 20 years old. And yet Gil made the decision that he was going to be a part of a family of faith, and he knew that he was saved by Jesus Christ. He experienced the joy uh, that, that passes all understanding with his relationship with Jesus Christ. And he wanted to share that joy with the people that God placed in his life. A mark of a Christian, a mark of a Methodist, is joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You have heard the good news today, that God loves you, that God cares about you. This is a reason for us to rejoice and to share that joy with the world around us. Let's pray. Dear God of grace, God of glory, God of love and forgiveness, we thank you for the assurance of your grace in our lives. God, despite our circumstances, help us to choose to love you and to rejoice at your presence in our midst. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.
Let's all rise together, and we're going to sing the the hymn, Fairest Lord Jesus. This is hymn 140, I'm sorry, 189. We'll be singing verses 1 and 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You've heard the good news that Christ came into the world to save the whole world. Christ came into the world to save you. And go now in peace and share this joy with those whom God places in your life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.